Him. Hallelujah. Are you ready for takeoff tonight? Are you ready for takeoff tonight? Well, come on, come on, stand to your feet and let's give God some praise. We're going to have interactive worship on tonight. Come on, all over the building, just begin to lift your hands and give your God some praise because He's so worthy. Come on, open your mouth. worship team did such a wonderful job of ushering us into the presence of the Lord but that was their voice and I declare to you tonight that God wants to hear our voice so if you can just open up your mouth and give your God your best praise come on we're gonna turn this into a birthing room it's time to take off come on open it a little hot shot Come on, open up your mouth. Come on, open up your mouth. I'm just talking to a few people tonight that you declare that there will be no more delay in my life. I come tonight so that everything can be set free in my life. Come on, open up your mouth. Open up your mouth. Oh God, open up your mouth. I pray that I'm speaking to a desperate people a desperate people a people that saying I'm not going home denied I'm not going home to the same situations I'm not going home defeated but I'm going back with the giant's head in my hand come on and give him glory hallelujah glory to God come on glory to God glory to God Glory to God. Come on, open your mouth. Glory to God. Come on, open your mouth. Glory to God. Come on, bless him. Come on, bless him. Come on, bless him. Come on, bless him. Come on open your mouth. Hallelujah. Open your mouth and give God the glory. And if you have a prayer language tonight, now is the time. So open up your mouth and begin to pray to your God. Come on, the little whole shot. Come on, open your mouth for the little whole. Open your mouth, glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I tell you tonight that God is going to do some great things in this room. I announce to you tonight that there is absolutely no more delay. I don't think you all heard me. I said that there is absolutely no more delay. Holy Spirit has shown me that there are some women in the room that feel like their time has passed. You feel like the window of opportunity has shut, it's closed. I'm too old, it's too late. I miss my moment, but I declare to you tonight the word of the Lord that there is no more delay. My God, hallelujah. We can do better than that, hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. What does that mean for you? That means that hell has to cough up. I said that hell has to cough up everything that it has taken away from you. Tonight is the night. Can you turn and tell your neighbor tonight is the night? Oh, turn around and tell somebody else tonight is the night tonight is the night of breakthrough tonight is the night of deliverance tonight is tonight that I birth every dream every vision can we put those blessed hands together glory to God we are so honored to be here tonight amen we honor your pastor Pastor Carrie Swanson, can you put them hands together for the visionary of this house? 
such fine hospitality. And to my friend, Pastor Janet, so beautiful on the inside and out. She's just a beautiful soul. We love you, Pastor Janet. I feel like I'm at home. Is that all right? I, I feel like I'm at home. Bless God. I honor my husband tonight, Pastor Chris, Pastor James Christopher Watson, who traveled with us and our team. We honor all of the wonderful people of God. But I'm telling you tonight, I'm so excited. Let's grab a text. Let's grab a text, and I'm going to let you be seated. Amen. Pastor Janet, there is one scripture that I did not give you when I sent the scriptures over, and that is the one that I want to read first. I'm excited tonight about what God is going to do in this house. I'm excited about the deliverances that we're going to see. I'm excited tonight because the Bible declares that the enemy is a thief and a robber. And tonight he has to cough up his goods. He has to give back everything that he has stolen from us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. How many people believe that tonight? I need you to know tonight that you are not in this room just because or only because it is the annual conference. I need you to understand tonight that you are not in the room because you were invited only. But I need you to understand tonight that you are here by divine appointment and by divine assignment. God, in his infinite wisdom, as he looked through time, he knows every situation that you've gone through, every disappointment that you've suffered, everything that was taken away from you. And he has set up this weekend to restore to you the years My God, I said the Lord is restoring to us this weekend the years. My God, see, we need to get a revelation of what I'm saying, because listen, money can buy back things, but only God can give you time back. Money. Money can buy homes, money can buy cars, money can, can finance a good education, but some of us in this room tonight has lost time. And the only person that can give us time back is God. And God says, I'm here tonight and I've stepped outside of eternity and I've come to see about my daughters on tonight. Come on and open up your mouth. Come on and get the atmosphere conducive because we're going to birth a breakthrough tonight. Come on. We're going to birth a breakthrough tonight. Some things that have been held from us have been stubborn. We've prayed and we've fasted. We've sought the Lord for deliverance, but still there was no answer. But tonight, the answer has come. Yeah, so too. What you need to understand is that every time I open my mouth and I say it, I heard someone say tonight on the stage that you have to speak to your mountain. And every time I open up my mouth, the princes that sit over this principality, that sits over this region, they hear what we're saying and they understand that their time is now up. My God, we have authority in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Revelations chapter 4, verse 1. Revelations, and I'm sorry, Revelations chapter 4, verse 1. Just want to take this text. After this, I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven. 
And the first voice which I heard was as it were of a trumpet talking to me, talking with me, which said, come up higher. The voice said, come up higher. Tonight we just need to come up a little bit higher. The Lord is saying, come up, come up higher. And I will show thee things which must be hereafter. It is something about the human soul that hates not knowing what's next. There's something about the human mind that develops a discomfort when we're walking by faith. Because see now, when you're walking by faith, you're not walking by sight. You're walking by a voice that you've heard. And so now it seems that you're walking in the dark and you're walking by faith and you don't know what it is that's next. But God is saying what I need these women to understand is that in order to move to the next step, to the next dimension of breakthrough, I need them to come up higher. What is he talking about? He does not want us to get used to a form of godliness or religion. A form of godliness has a list of activities that we do every day. Isn't that what we do when we've been saved for a number of years? We have our list already written out what, I, what I'm going to do in the morning. When I get up, I have my prayer already scheduled. I normally pray from 7 to 8, or I normally pray from 9 to 10. Every Monday, I fast until 3 o'clock. Every Wednesday, it's women's meeting, and I get together with the intercessors. It, it's robotic, but God says, what I want to do with this group, I want to bring you into a level of intimacy that will move you out of flesh and come Calls you to come up higher. The Bible declares uh, in the last days, he said that men would be more lovers of pleasures than lovers of God. And I, I've come to declare to you tonight that if we are robotic in our relationship with God, that we will begin to do things in a form and deny the power of God. And so God says, what I want you to do is I want you to come up higher. Now, the first thing is this. Most of us don't have a desire to come up higher. And the reason that we don't have a desire to come up higher is because the systems of this world has robbed us from, from the intimacy with God. Because I'm, listen, ladies, we wear a lot of hats. There are a lot of things every day that we must do. And we can get caught up in the activity of being the wife, of being the mother, of being the cheerleader, of being the coach, that we miss intimacy with God. My God. Anybody in here tonight, I believe we have a room full uh, of grown women that we understand that when I'm intimate, I have to take my clothes off. Uh, I, I can't get intimate unless I'm naked. And what God wants to do tonight is to make you comfortable with being naked. I love the testimony that the young lady gave us tonight, talking about going through the dirt. Many of us cannot be delivered because we are too ashamed of our testimonies. But God want to make you comfortable in your nakedness because when you come to him naked, that says to him that I'm not ashamed of my process. I'm not ashamed of what you allowed me to walk through. I'm not ashamed of what you delivered me from. I'm not ashamed of what you let me survive. Somebody say, come up higher. All right now. 
To soar, listen to this. To soar means to arise, to ascend, to climb, to lift, to mount up, and to rise. The Latin word for soar means out. And it acts and means out. And aura meaning breeze. And when you put the two together, it means out of the air. Out of the air. It also means to move from a lower to a higher position. How many of you tonight want to come from the low place? And you're ready to go up to the high place. You're ready to go up to the high places of the Lord. You're ready, Oda Riosa, for every gift inside of you to be activated. You need the power of God operating in your life when you can walk up to some things and declare without shaking in your boots that it shall come to pass. Listen, it's not because of a title. It's not because of our identity in society, but it's because of our identity in Christ that whatever I say, it has to come to pass. There's a level that you walk in with the Holy Ghost, mother. There's a level that you walk in with the Holy Ghost where God will not let your words fall to the ground. Anybody want that kind of power tonight? He said, we ought to pray in the Holy Ghost. How many people in here pray in the Holy Ghost? Can I tell you the power of praying in the Holy Ghost? If you don't have your prayer language, you want to pray and seek God for your prayer language. Because when you pray in English, you pray your mind. But when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you pray the Holy Ghost mind. And you're not praying about the problem, but you're praying the answer. And see, it's not many preachers now that are preaching the power of the Holy Ghost. See, church, joining church and being a part uh, of the community is not enough. But what we need is the power of a living Savior on the inside of us. Uh, that I can declare things that be not as though they were. When I can lay hands on cancer and watch it be healed. Come on now. When I can speak to a storm and the storm literally cease. I'm not talking about a storm that you walk through in, um, spiritually. But I'm talking about a real rain and thunderstorm. You have the power in your belly to stop it come on and give him a praise come on we can do better than that come on and give God some praise come on and bless him tonight come on we can do better than that I told you it's interactive tonight it's interactive worship tonight come on and bless him come on come on we gonna get this room on fire Come on and give him glory. Oh, Shia. I want to know where my hungry section is. We got to have a sound check in here. Where is my hungry section? Come on, come on, come on. Come on, if you're hungry, you will work with me tonight. Come on. If you're hungry, you're going to work with me tonight. Because listen, if we keep doing it the way that we've been doing it, we're going to get the same results. But tonight I come as a midwife to birth you out in another dimension. You need another power to push you from the place that you've been in to another place of power and authority with God. Come on and bless him tonight. Number one, if we're going to soar, now we talked about, you watched the video, and on the video I said, I announced to you in advance, um, I asked you, have you ever been on an airplane and you were ready for takeoff? And all of a sudden, I know all of us in here has, have experienced that at one time or another, but you're on the airplane, your seatbelt is fastened, all of the preliminaries have been taken care of, and you're ready for your destination. You're ready to travel to your desired destination. And all of a sudden, you hear the announcement 
that your flight has been delayed. Oh, God, how frustrating it is, especially when there are people on the other side waiting for my arrival. I have everything on the other side already waiting for me to show up. They know the time of my departure and they know the time that I'm supposed to show up. But all of a sudden, out of nowhere, here comes a delay. Isn't that just like the enemy in your life? You thought that you would be a certain place at a certain time. Surely by now I would be married. Surely by now I would be out of debt. Surely by now my ministry would be birthed. Surely by now there would be more oil. There would be more anointing on my life. I've been through God but delays somebody shout delay Delay. oh I'm telling you but it's no more delay we are outside of that tonight so the Lord wanted me to share with you tonight about this delay is that you must understand that height is necessary for sight Somebody say height is necessary for sight. Can you say it again? Height is necessary for sight. Now, why is that? Why is height necessary for sight? Have you ever noticed that when you are ground level, everything in front of you seems big? This is how fear sets in because the spirit of fear operates in magnification and imagery. In other words, you know the acronym, fear, false evidence appearing. That's a sight word, false evidence appearing real. So as long as I am ground level, As long as as I stay on the battlefield with the enemy. Because everything that the enemy does is low. (laughs) He's low level. So as long as I stay low, I can't see what God is doing. I can't see what God is saying. And this is why we opened up tonight with the Lord saying, I need you to come up higher. Because when you come up higher, you're going to see my perspective. You're going to see it like I see it. Now watch this. Have you ever been on the plane and you looked out of your window? And when you looked out the window, everything beneath you looked small. This is what it looks like when you soar with God. When you get up in the heavenly dimension with God and begin to sit in heavenly places with Christ Jesus, everything that the enemy throws at you now looks small to you because you are looking at it through God's eyes. You are positionally in the right place. Many of us, Many of us quit before time and we throw in the towel because of what things look like. But if it looks like you can't make it, maybe you are flying too low. Oh, I invite you tonight to come on up. You need to come up, raise your altitude. Some people tonight say, but pastor, you don't understand every time that I'm almost right there, it seems like the enemy sets up embushments. He does things to stop me. He calls his enemies to form and to rise against me. But the Bible declares that no weapon formed against us shall be able to prosper. Come on now. I'm reminded my sister-in-law told me a story some years ago. I might have told it the last time I was here. But my sister-in-law told me a story about an airplane that had a snake on it. Anybody got snakes on the plane? You, you trying to fly with God. You're trying to birth uh, the vision of God. You're trying to move out of the elementary things and grow up in God. But you got snakes on the plane. 
You got people that don't, you have people sometimes that don't want to see you um, enlarged. You have people that don't want to see you blessed. You have people that don't want to see you break through. Snakes, somebody say snakes on the plane. How do I get these snakes off my plane? Well, the story goes that the people on the plane saw the snake and, 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 and everybody was in a panic because, watch this, if I'm on the plane, I can't run nowhere to get away from the snake. I'm closed in with this joker. Snakes on the plane. Everybody in an uproar because the snake is on the plane. The pilot says, what is going on on the plane with all of this commotion? Somebody tells the pilot, there's a snake on the plane. Pilot says, no problem. The way that we kill the snake is we got to climb the altitude. If we take this plane up a little bit higher, if we go higher, the snake going to die. He going to lose oxygen. He going to lose strength. And the story goes uh, that the pilot took the plane up some notches. If the pilot went into another atmosphere, now the snake is on the plane dead. I come to tell you tonight that whatever snake is in your life, all you need to do is come up a little bit higher. Come up a little bit higher. Come on, we ought to be praising God better than that. You need to come up a little higher. The snake was designed to keep you low. The snake was designed to keep you on your belly. But what he didn't know, that he was going to push me into my purpose. What he didn't know, that my tears was going to make me pray harder. What he didn't know, that when he touched my children, I was going to fast longer. What he didn't know, that he was building tenacity inside of me. Where my soaring women at? I should have fainted. Oh, where's my section that should have fainted? I should have lost my mind. Oh, but these stars and these struggles, they push me through. My God, I feel it breaking in here. I feel it breaking in here. Because now you understand that nothing by any means can harm you. Do you understand that nothing that he said by any means shall harm you? He said not even a serpent or a scorpion can stop you. I dare you to say I'm unstoppable. Now it sounds like that I'm talking to people that's not convinced. It, it sounds like perhaps... Perhaps we have allowed, we have allowed our accuser to make us believe what we see. He, he's made us to believe what we see. But, but what he didn't know is that I have another set of eyes. I have another set of eyes. And because I've come up higher, I can see where the enemy's seat is. See, when you come up higher, you can see where things are hiding. You can see the things that you didn't know where they, what that was opposing you. Somebody say, come up higher. Listen, in order for the plane, any plane, to get off ground, the plane must overcome its weight through the force of lift. What is God trying to say? What he's saying is that most of us, we, we want to take the cart before the horse. We want the promise without the pain. We don't like process. We don't like building strength. But we like coming out with strength. But God said, I need to build strength in you because I have to teach you how to govern power. 
if I give you power too early, then, then you may think that this power is because of you. He said, but I'm going to let you defeat your enemies little by little. I'm going to take you line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little, so that when you come out, the glory goes to God and God alone. Oh, come on, magnify his name in here. Come on and magnify his name in here. He said we got to overcome weight through the force of lift. Uh, there's a force that's fighting against you. But if you can lift past it, every weight is going to drop off of your life. In other words, what I'm trying to say is you got to praise your way through it. Don't nothing be the praiser. See, it's something about worship and praise that does something to an atmosphere. It, it, it's, a tra it's like perfume to God. It attracts his presence to you when you're going through and you still lift your hands and give God praise. Can I get a hallelujah in the room? Watch this. Just want to read two pieces of scripture before we go any further Ephesians 2 4 through 6 let's look at the text let's look at the text many of us get confused because we determine our position by our condition in other words we allow what we're going through at the time to distort how we view that we've been made. Somebody say, I'm more than a conqueror. Oh, can we say it again? I'm more than a conqueror. So watch this. My condition is not my position. Watch this, but my position is my condition. It's the other way around. Because positionally, if I'm a son of God, then everything has to bow to me. Oh, y'all not following me here. I say if I'm a son of God, that when I declare a thing, it has to obey me. As a son of God, you are always a conqueror. As a son of God, you never come behind in any good thing. But your condition sometimes distorts how you view your situation. But watch this. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved and raised up together. That means with him. That word together means you're not by yourself. He raised you up with him and made us do what? Where? You got a soul. You got to come up higher. We sit together in heavenly places. Now watch this. Anytime my Bible tells me that I can sit, sit down is a word that is over. Sit down means that it is finished. Come on, I need a room full of women tonight that know that you don't have to keep fighting, but you can sit down in Christ because the victory has already been won. You are not fighting to win. Listen, you are not fighting to win. The battle has already been won. You are already more than a conqueror. You just need to remind yourself of where you sit. You need to remind yourself tonight of who you sit in. The reason, listen, 
I think every believer that's at least one years old know where Jesus Christ is. So watch this. We're going to scan the room. Where is Jesus Christ? And, and where is he at? Ah, he's on the right hand of the Father. He's seated. But watch this. Because I accepted him as my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, I'm in him. Listen, listen, I'm going to say it again. Jesus is our Savior, and because I'm born again, I'm in him. That's what it said. Look, this is not Karen 1 and 1. This is Ephesians. He said, sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, which means that if, if you can't believe that you are victorious for you, then you have to know that it, since I'm in Christ and he's seated beside God on the right hand of the Father and he has all victory, if I'm in him, I have the same victory. I have the same power. the same position watch this it says the Bible says that everything is under his feet but don't forget we're in him oh God y'all not getting it I'm in him and everything Pastor Janet is under his feet so because I'm in him and everything is under his feet everything is under my feet don't you get it twisted my position in Christ determines my condition my condition say I'm healed my condition say I'm filled cause positionally I'm the king. So as he is, so are we where in the world. That means everything that could possibly come against us, we have already won the victory. Isn't that good news? Isn't that good? Does somebody need to rest tonight? So, and we're going to talk about the difference between flying and soaring. Because, see, flying means that you're moving in the air. But when you saw, you've moved, you have gone past the place of having to do anything mechanically. See, when a bird is flying, he got to move his wings. That means he's at work. Uh, we 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 gonna have Bible class. He's at work. It, that means he has to work his faith. We talking about we have to work our faith. We have to work our patience when we're flying. But there's a dimension in God where I don't have to do any work. Now I move from flying to soaring. This is called a dimension of glory. This is dimension of glory where time literally stands still. This is the dimension of glory. Where now, where I used to work to get to a place, because I am soaring, it happens in accelerated time. How many people tired of waiting? How many people in this room, like I've said many times, when it comes to me and my life, why is it so hard? It seems like everybody else around me can just get it easy. But when it comes to me, he resists me. I, I mean, just a simple hairdo day. I got to fight to get there. I got to fight through traffic. I got to fight for the appointment. I, I, the, the, the hairdresser attitude bad. Everything is a fight. But in this soaring dimension, see, what y'all don't understand is that when the prophet hit Statesboro, Georgia, your life got shifted. Because there's a dimension in the mantle. There's a dimension in the mantle that will cause environments to shift. And what was 
hard to you before will not be hard to you when I leave. Guess what? It's not arrogance. It's called power with God. See, when God gives you power, what he did for you, you now have the right to use that same authority to release in somewhere else. Because I can never make happen for somebody else something that's never happened in me. And so this is why it's good. This is why it's good. The things that you have endured. The things that you have suffered. Because it's now giving you power with God. Because you can grab somebody's hand and say, girl, I can help pray you through that. Or you can grab somebody's hand and say, but I survived that divorce. You can grab somebody's hand and say, but I survived bankruptcy. I survived cancer. I des- I, 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 I. In other words, whatever they can bring, you got a testimony with God. And guess what? The power is transferable. I said the power is transferable. Now, I can lay hands on the sick. Watch this. A few, a, a, a few weeks ago, we had a service in our church where the power of God literally fell so strong that we could not preach. This is when you move from flying to soaring. When you don't need to do work. The Lord said, I don't need a preacher today. Because I just stepped in the room. We got to get to the place where we let God have his way. Sometimes we put too much time on God and we just timed him right out of the sanctuary. Sometimes we got to labor. We got to labor in worship and prayer until we get a breakthrough in the heavens. And when we got that breakthrough in the heavens, I declare to you we didn't lay hands or anything. But demons begin to cry out of people in the back of the church. Some people were running up to the altar coughing up. Uh, coughing up uh, uh, demonic spirits just off of Jesus stepping in the room. But not only that, not only that, there was a woman in our service that had already been diagnosed for uh, the kidney, what is it? dialysis. She was just a week or so away from dialysis. But when the glory, this is why I tell you, you got to soar. You got to wake up your spiritual appetite. You got to wet your palate for the things of God and begin to go back on your face and begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. I know you know how to pray eloquently, but I'm talking about that unknown tongue. When you don't know what you're saying, that you're praying the will of God. And when you start praying the will and the mind of God, things start happening happening in your atmosphere she went back to the doctor I believe two days after that service this was an appointment to prep her for the dialysis treatment that was to come the following week but something happened with the test results because of a moment Of climbing up high enough in the spirit. Of coming up. Of soaring to that heavenly place with Christ Jesus. Where something begin to happen. See when you get in the presence of God. You can't remain the same. When you get in the presence of God. Whatever was on you. God will make an exchange. If you are disturbed. He'll take your disturbance and give you peace. If you are sick. He will take the sick. He bore our sicknesses. He bore our grief and gave us healing but sometimes we just we're flying too low somebody said well that's not good good theology but watch this if what I'm saying is not true then every church in America would be seeing cancer heal would be seeing people get up out of the wheelchairs but the fact of the matter is that we are accustomed to preaching a gospel that we can't demonstrate
And the reason that we can't demonstrate him is because we have not learned how to soar. I'm talking about get, I'm talking about I'm talking about getting in the presence of God until you lose track of time. I'm talking about praying in the Holy Ghost until you don't understand that when you hear yourself talking, you will wonder to yourself, is that me praying? I'm talking about getting lost in God so much so that when I come out, there's no more of my identity on me. But because I'm lost in him, all of what he is is now smeared on me. And now wherever I walk, things change. When my shadow begins to heal people because I'm in a place with God. Listen, this is not outdated. It's called the kingdom of God. My God. This woman went to the doctor, came back. Within that same week, she came back at the end of the week and said the test results came back. The blood work came back. They couldn't find any trace of, of that kidney being bad. She, she is not in dialysis. I'm talking about just a few weeks ago. The power of God. Somebody say the power of God. Jesus is alive. I come to tell you tonight, Jesus is alive. Watch this. That's not the only testimony. We had another young lady in the church that had a background of, of using drugs. You know what comes with using drugs. And so because of her drug addiction, she had a liver disorder. Very bad liver scarring disorder, taking medication. She goes to the doctor the same week. They do the blood work, come back, no trace of liver disorder. How many people want it? How many people want that kind of power working in your life? I know the enemy has told you that you have to be a preacher, but my Bible says that all you need to do is be a believer. He said, these signs shall follow them that believe. Come on and give God some praise. If you're like me, listen. Listen, I'm just going to be transparent. I'm the preacher, been preaching 20 some years, and I had a moment with God when I have even said, God has got to be more to it than this. It's, it's, it has to be another dimension. It has to be more to serving you than what I'm experiencing. It has to be more then I'm just getting up on Sundays and I'm preparing to do my routine. But I have no power in me to break things around me, to change atmospheres around me. There has to be more to it than this. Go to Ephesians 1.18. I promise you if you just give me a few more minutes. How many people excited tonight? Yeah. Glory to God. And listen, if you don't believe me, just try it. Give yourself three days. Get, give yourself three days of just seeking God. Get rid of all of the distractions. Cut the Netflix off. Cut the HBO off. And just get in the presence of your God. And give him your undivided attention. Watch this, ladies. We're not going to go back and forth with our husbands. <laughs> We're not going to try to prove who's the most spiritual. We're not going to be upset because they don't serve God like we do. Or because they left the toilet lid up. But we're going to pray on our faces. We're going to give God three days. Three days of fasting and prayer. And say, God, do something new in me. Listen, 
Listen, we're going to go to the text. But can I tell you something about baptism? Baptism is not a one-time event. Baptism of the Holy Ghost is not a, happened one time, but it's an infilling in an indwelling that we come back to every time we meet with God so he can pour more into us so that we have more to pour out. So let's look. The eyes, Ephesians 1.18, I'm sorry. 118 through 22, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling and what, if the, what is the riches of his glory of the inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of his power to who? To us would. Who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ Jesus, when he raised him from the dead, watch this, and set him at his own right hand, where? So we got to come up, right? Far above what? So when I'm seated in Christ, principalities can't stop me. I'm unstoppable. Oh, come on, room. I'm unstoppable. We are far above principality, and then what? It's powers in the earth, but because you're seated in Christ, you're above that. And might, and dominion, and what? See, some people got a name, and, and, and that name got some, a little money to it, and because it has money, it has power. But it says now that the power that he's given us, because I'm seated in him, this power is above every name. Not only in this world, but the world to come. This is what God want to do tonight. This is what he wants to do with us. He said this to me in my preparation for you. He said, I want to heal tonight the pain behind the smile. That's what's going to happen tonight. He want to heal the pain behind the smile. Listen. We know how to put the mask on. We know how to function when we're hurting. But God said, tonight the enemy's time is up. Then he said, I want my voice to be the only voice of validation that they need. You're no longer looking for man to tell you who you are. You're no longer looking for people's approval or applause. The Lord is saying tonight, I'm going to solidify my voice in your life. You're going to believe who I told you you were. And not only that, you're going to operate in it. Every gift in you tonight will be activated. We will no longer be stagnant, sitting on the bench, waiting for somebody else to get in the game. The Lord said, tell them that what I'm birthing in them tonight is presence over performance. Listen, we all know when to put our hands up. We know when to worship. We know where to put the I and where to dot the T. But God is saying tonight, I want my presence in your life more than your performance. Your performance has been good. But what I need is my presence on your life. But in order to do that, in order to do that, we have to get the weights off. Hebrews 12, please, 1 and 2, and I'm almost done. Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, I got to get the weights off of you. If we're going to soar, we have to take 
the weights off. The first thing is, I must admit what the weight is. I can't lie to myself. And I certainly can't lie to God. The Bible declares that if I make my bed in hell, he said God is there. Where, wherever you go, God is there. The Bible declares that he knows our thoughts from afar off. So we have to get rid of the weights. Listen at this. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside what? Not some of them, but how many? Everything that's holding me down from this life in God. Listen, somebody in this place tonight thinks their identity is wrapped up in their job, in their vocation, in their education. But after you obtain that, you're still going to be hungry. You're still going to be thirsty. Jesus is the only one that can satisfy. And he said, in order to get to this place, I need you to lay down every weight, everything that keeps you from me. See, there are some things that keep us from God. He said, but what I need you to do if you're going to soar is you have to lay those things down willingly. Now, some of us pray like this. Lord, please take. <laughs> Lord, please take. No, God is not going to take it. You have to lay it down. He says, and the sin which so easily ensnares us and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Now, what I love about that word weight, weight means every hindrance. Sometimes there are some hindrances in our lives. Somebody tonight said there is people. Sometimes your hunger can't stay alive because you have people in your life that's not thirsty for God like you are. You have people in your life that's not on fire for God and don't want to be on fire for God. But because we're not whole in our emotions, we don't want to cut people off because now I'm going to be alone. But tonight, God is going to give you the strength to walk away from every relationship that means you no good. There's a place that is calling me. There's a higher place in Zion that's calling me. So we got to get rid of the burdens. We have to get rid, get rid of the weights. Come on, somebody, begin to start pulling them off. Come on, begin to start pulling them off as a sign of faith. Come on, let's move in here. I just have one question, one question tonight. See, because, because I believe that what I, it's just like the bank. Whatever you put in is what you're going to be able to withdraw. See, when you come, sometimes, and I know the preachers can testify to this, sometimes uh, people will come and they come one way and leave the same way. But they don't understand that it, in the worship, you came, but you didn't put anything into the atmosphere. You didn't put any praise and faith on it. You didn't put a deposit. You didn't put a demand on the grace of God. So the word beset. Because I, I read from King James. He said, run the race with patience. We're going to get rid of every sin that so easily besets us. Now, when I studied this word, the word beset means that the enemy has encased. He has put traps all around your life. That means, Pastor, can I get your help? Evangelist Cuffy, can I get your help? Can I get your help, my sister? Come here. I need y'all to encase me around. Come on, one more, one more. Can I get you, my sister, to help me? Get, get around me, get around me. Can I get one more, one more, one more? Can I get one more person? 
Come on, one more. Yes, come on, help. Help me. Help me. This is what it looks like when the enemy besets you. You're trying to get to a target, but close in, close in, close in. Don't let me. I, you're trying to beset. I, 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 my, my, my destination is over here, but I, I'm trying to get, but they, they have me, they encamp me. So, in natural wisdom, well, I'll go another route. Because if I turn this way, I still can get that way. But w- what you going to do? Beset. Oh, well, maybe I'll try this way. Oh, God, well, maybe I'll try this way. He says, but what the enemy has done has set up ambushments all around you to keep you trapped in so that you cannot get to the place that I called you to. But it's something about the Holy Ghost. It's something about when I look to, the Bible says, uh, he said, I'm going to endure. I ain't going to give up. Pastor Jay, I'm not going to give up. It's fighting me. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to give up. And I understand I can't do it by myself. But, but the scripture says, but when I look to Jesus, when I look to Jesus, the author and the finisher of my faith, he makes a way for me. He break yokes that I couldn't break on my own. He destroys the enemy when he sets up ambushments all around me. Tonight, nothing by any means will be able to stop you because you're looking to the author and the finisher of your faith. Come on and give God some glory. Come on and give God the praise. And can you shout tonight, I am unstoppable? Somebody declare, I'm unstoppable. Absolutely nothing can stop me. Come on and shout again, I am unstoppable. Can you say it one more time? Can you say it till you believe it? (laughs) Say it one more time till you believe it. See, every time you say it, there's a force that's happening in the earth. Say it again. I am. Come on, say it again. I am. See, what you're doing every time you open up your mouth, you are the prophet of your own life. And the words that you declare, though something happens when you open up your mouth because you are a living, speaking being that God created in his own image. have the same power that God has and when God created the heavens and the earth he did it by the spoken word and so out of everything else that was made when he made it he made man in his own image and his likeness which means all those other things couldn't speak they don't know how to talk They don't have the intellect, but God gave man the intellect so that we can create atmospheres. And so my life is now going to look like the words that are coming out of my mouth. And I declare tonight that we are unstoppable. I'm no longer grounded. My flight is no longer delayed. I'm coming up higher in the spirit and everything that's opposing me must bow. And I declare tonight that it doesn't bow in the future, but because soar is a word of acceleration, that it happens for me now. Oh, y'all don't understand. You don't understand the force of faith. See, faith, the Bible declares in Hebrews 11 and 1, it says, now faith is. Listen, the Bible says now faith is, not tomorrow, not next week, not in an hour, but when I position myself with God and everything that he said, and when I believe it, it happens for me now. 
thing that you put in the future, you step outside of faith. Faith is a noun word. And I declare tonight we are unstoppable. This is for the woman and we're getting ready for the altar call. This is, the, this is for the woman tonight that feels like that everything the Lord has asked you to do, you've been faithful and committed in doing it. You obeyed him. There's quite a few of you in here tonight. You obeyed the voice of the Lord. But you thought in your obedience that your obedience would open up an easy way for you. And you thought, because I've obeyed God, why does it seem like all hell has broken loose in my life? What you need to understand about your dangerous obedience is that obedience doesn't secure your safety. But obedience is what causes the attack. Somebody had it twisted tonight. You thought, you thought that maybe you did something wrong. You thought that maybe I missed the mark. You thought maybe I didn't hear him properly in prayer. Because it looks like everything is coming against you. But it's your obedience that's put a target on your back. And tonight, I come to tell you to keep going. I come tonight to tell you to keep pushing. I come tell you tonight, don't stop. You're right at the edge of your river joy. That means everything is getting ready to break through in your life. That means that everything that you've been praying for the last few years is getting ready to come upon your house. You're getting ready to be restored. You're getting ready to be refreshed. You're getting ready to be redeemed from every curse of the enemy. Come on and give God the praise in here. You are absolutely unstoppable. Nothing can stop you because of your position. And God has brought us to this place this weekend to give us aerial view. We need to have aerial view. I'm going to say it again. We need to have aerial view. I'm going to say it again until somebody gets hungry to come up higher. The place that you've been in, you've been there too long. Tonight, God is shifting you, says the spirit of the living God. Your old season has expired. Can you turn and tell your neighbor, my old season has expired. And I can't stay there anymore. But this new place that I'm going to... I'm willing to pay the price. I'm willing to put in the prayer to sustain this level that God is taking me to. This is a call. Tonight I want to pray. First I want to pray. I want to pray for the ladies that understand beyond a shadow of a doubt that you've been called to more than this. Oh God, listen to me carefully. When I say you've been called to more than this, that means your present condition or, your, or uh, the, the level of your present spiritual power. You've been called to more. You know that you've been called to more, but you didn't know how to unlock it. I want you to come tonight. And everyone that needs to be unlocked, I want you to stand on this side. We're going to unlock you tonight. everybody I don't know hallelujah we're gonna unlock you to the whole shataya 
As you coming, as you're coming, as you're coming, as you're coming tonight, I just need you to slip your hands up. I, I want you to slip your hands up. And I want you to know this before we go in, that the enemy's time is up. Every trial that you have been going through before you've been here, I declare as a prophet of God, the time is up. That's why some of you tonight, it was so hard for you to get here. It seems like everything tried to stop you. Because the enemy understood that it's time is up. If I can just stop her from getting to this place. I need you to lift up your hands. Lift up your hands and come on and begin to worship him. Come on, begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. Come on, open your mouth and begin to worship him. Begin to worship him. Begin to worship. Come on, open your mouth. Come on, we need to send up a sound. Come on, we need to send that call to the Isaiah. We need to send up a sound tonight. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. We unlock you. We unlock you. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Dosha. We unlock in the name of the, the power of God. The Osha. Glory to Every weight come off. We command every weight to loose her now. In the name of Jesus. Ah, Dios. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. There's a group of women tonight that you thought your season was over and you missed the moment and that you could never get it back again.